In this video, we're going to learn how to solve these six dynamics problems. In order to solve these problems, I'm going to go through a set of steps. The first step is to draw a system boundary. The second step is to indicate positive direction. Third step is to draw the force diagram. Fourth step is to break the forces into components if they're not on the coordinate axes. The fifth step is to apply Newton's second law, net force equals ma for the x and y axis. And the sixth step is to solve for the unknown variable. So our first problem is a force at an angle problem where we have a force pushing this mass at a certain amount of angle theta across a surface that has a coefficient of friction of mu k. And the first step we're going to do is to indicate our system. And so I'm going to indicate our system here. And then the second step will be to indicate the positive direction. And we're going to make right positive and up positive. And then we're going to draw our force diagram. I like to start with gravitational force first. So uh, gravitational force is going to be down mg. Uh, and then we know that there's a surface here pushing this up. So there's a normal force in the upward direction. We know there's friction. So there's a force to the left. And then there's a force applied force at an angle. Uh, and then this theta is going to be equal to this theta right here. And because this force is not along the x and y component, we have to break it into components. Uh, so we have f cosine theta because it's along theta. And over here we have f sine theta because it's opposite of theta. Well, what we're looking for is the acceleration. And we want to find for the acceleration in terms of the given variables. So we're going to next apply Newton's second law for the vertical uh, axis, vertical motion. So net force y equals may. Uh, now we know that vertical, it's not accelerating, so it's going to be a zero on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we're going to start with the force in the positive direction, which is the normal force, minus the forces in the negative direction, which is going to be mg and f, cos f sine theta, which is right here. And then if we solve for n, we get mg plus f sine theta. Uh, now this is going to be important. We're going to use this for the next step of the uh, uh, of the solving for the solution here. Next, we're going to analyze this horizontally at the horizontal motion. And so we have net force x equals max. In the horizontal direction, we have f cosine theta in the positive direction minus mu n in the negative direction equals to ma x and we can move we can substitute the uh, normal force from up here into down here so we get f cosine theta minus mu and then the, we're doing the substitution from up here we get mg plus f sine theta equals m a x so we can find the acceleration the horizontal direction by dividing m on both sides and we get f cosine theta minus mu times mg plus f sine theta all over the mass. Next, we're going to look at a modified Atwood's machine. And modified Atwood's machine is just the mass connected to a string along a pulley. And then the other mass is hanging, uh, hanging down. Once again, we do have friction in this problem. And in this problem, we're looking for the acceleration and the tension as well uh, in terms of the given variables. So the first thing we want to do is to draw that uh, system boundary. I'm using a dotted line here to do that. We're going to assume that the pulley is massless. And next, we're going to indicate the positive direction. So I'm going to make the positive direction uh, clockwise over here. So it's going to be going this way on the table, be to the right. And then on the right-hand side, it's going to be downward. And then uh, for M2, uh, there's going to be a gravitational force of M2G. So uh, we're going to draw a force down for M2G. There's friction. So there is uh, Fk, which is equal to mu normal force. For M1, there is a normal force that is balancing the m1g so these two forces are going to be balanced next we're going to apply Newton's second law so we're only going to look at forces external forces acting on our system so yes there is tension force but we don't have to worry about that right now we're just looking at external forces acting on our system we're going to use this to calculate our acceleration so we have m2g along the positive in the positive direction minus mu n, that's the friction in the negative direction, equal to ma. And we can uh, substitute n. We know n is m1g because these are balanced, not accelerating vertically. So we substitute m1g for n. 
Now this M on the right hand side, we have to be real careful with that because this M is the system mass. And the system mass is all the mass in your system. And in this case, it's M1 plus M2. And if we divide M1 plus M2 on both sides, we get M2G minus mu M1G divided by M1 plus M2. So next we're gonna look at tension. So to, to find the tension, we're going to isolate just M2 by itself. We're going to draw a system boundary, indicate the positive direction. Uh, the reason I'm making down positive is because it's accelerating downward. Uh, so sometimes we, we can do that, uh, but really it's arbitrary. You can make up positive if you want. So I'm making down positive. Here's my force diagram. M2G is going to be down, T is up. And we're going to apply Newton's second law. So F equals MA to so the force in the positive, positive direction, M2G, minus the force in the negative direction, T, is equal to M2A. This M, remember, it is your system mass. Our system here is, is mass 2. And then if I uh, move the M2 to the other side here, or if I move the T to the other side and subtract M2A on both sides, I get T equals M2G minus m2a. Now, we can also uh, solve the tension using uh, mass 1. So once again, we draw a system boundary, draw the positive direction, then we draw the force diagram. Now, this force diagram is a little different than m2 because this is on a table, on a surface. So we have m1g down, normal up. We have friction to the left, tension to the right. Uh, applying Newton's second law, we have tension in the positive direction minus friction in the negative direction equals m1a, the mass of our system. And then uh, we can substitute uh, for n. We know n is m1g. And if we solve for t, we get t equals mu1g plus m1a. Next, we're going to take a look at a pulley problem. In this problem, m2 has a greater mass than m1. And we're looking for the acceleration as well as the tension in terms of the given variables. First thing I want to do is to draw that system boundary. I'm using that dotted line, and then I'm draw, indicating my positive direction. Since M2 is has more mass, it's gonna pro, it's gonna rotate clockwise. So I'm gonna make clockwise my positive direction. The external forces on my system are uh, the weight of M2, so M2g, and the weight of M1, which is M1g. I'm going to apply Newton's second law. So Newton's second law equals ma. So I have m2g minus m1g equal to uh, the system mass, which is m1 plus m2 times a. And then if I divide m1 plus m2 on both sides, I get m2g minus m1g divided by m1 plus m2, uh, which is equal to, if I want to make it look a little nicer, I can factor out the g, and we get m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2, all multiplied by g. Now we're also looking for the tension in this problem. So we're gonna isolate just mass one. We're going to draw the system boundary, indicate the positive direction since it's accelerating upward. I'm gonna make up positive, but once again, it's arbitrary. You can make down positive as long as you're consistent. Uh, the tension is gonna be upward. It's gonna be greater than the weight of M1 because it's accelerating upward. And next we're going to apply Newton's second law. I'm going to take the force in the positive direction, T, the tension force, minus the weight of M1, which is M1G, equal to uh, the system mass times A, so M1 times A. If I divide M1 on both sides, I get A is equal to T minus M1G divided by M1. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to isolate uh, mass 2. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to draw the system boundary right here, and then I'm going to... Uh, draw the force diagram, and the force diagram for this one is T is upward and uh, M2G is going to be downward. So uh, I will apply Newton's second law again, and Newton's second law is equal to, tells us that the net force is equal to MA, and we're going to take the force in the positive direction, M2G, minus the force in the negative direction, T, is equal to M2A, system mass times the acceleration. If I divide M2 on both sides, I get uh, acceleration equal to M2G minus T divided by M2. Now, I don't know the acceleration in this problem. It was not given. So I'm going to set these two equal to each other so I can get rid of the acceleration. And this is what I get. Okay, I just set this on the left equal to this on here on the right. 
And then I got rid of the acceleration. Now I'm just solving for T. I'm going to multiply M1 on both sides, multiply M2 on both sides. And then if I do that, you'll notice over here, I get M1, M2, G is equal to M1, M2, G. So I'm going to move this M1, M2, G to the right-hand side. So I get two of these. And now right-hand side, this should be T, M1. If I uh, add this on both sides, that gets moved to the left. And then I factor out the T, solving for the tension. Divide both sides by M2 minus M1. I get T is equal to 2M1, M2G divided by M2 plus M1. Now we're going to look at a uh, inclined plane problem. So we're looking for the acceleration. We have a mass uh, slide down an inclined plane. It's got a certain angle of theta. There is friction in this problem. Uh, the first step I'm going to do is to, once again, draw the system boundary. So I have my dotted line. I'm going to indicate the positive direction. Now, the reason I'm rotating this is because it's moving down the ramp. And how you, um, the, the, your, your decision to make the what direction positive comes down to, you know, how's this, what can you, how can you set this up to make the problem easier? And so I know it's sliding down. So it's going to make it easier to solve this problem if I make one of the axes in the direction that the box is sliding. Next, I'm going to draw the force diagram. And uh, we know that there's a gravitational force on the mass. There's a normal force from the inclined plane. Notice that it's at an angle. It's perpendicular to the surface. And then I also have friction. It's going up the ramp. Because mg is not on our coordinate axes, it's not on the x and y axis, we're going to break it into components. And uh, so this theta right here is equal to this theta. And so if we break it into components, this this perpendicular component to the surface will be mg cosine theta because it's adjacent to the theta. This uh, this component will be uh, mg sine theta because it's opposite the angle here. So now we're going to apply Newton's second law, uh, net force equals ma. We're going to take the force in the positive y direction minus the forces in the negative y direction. And we set that equal to zero because it's not accelerating along the y direction. And then we solve for n, we get n is equal to mg cosine theta. I'm going to bracket that because we're going to use that in just a moment. Next, we're going to um, look at the problem along the x-axis. And the force in the positive x direction is mg sine theta minus friction, mu times n, which is equal to max. We know that n is equal to mg cosine theta, so we can do a substitution right here. and to solve for the acceleration, we're going to divide the m on both sides. And so all the m's cancel out. We get the acceleration equal to g sine theta minus mu g cosine theta. So one interesting thing about this is that you'll notice that there's no uh, mass in the uh, solution. And so the mass doesn't matter. It gets all canceled out. And then we can also factor out the g. And we get a is equal to g. Uh, times sine theta minus mu cosine theta. Now let's take a look at an elevator problem. So in this elevator problem, um, we're looking for the normal force uh, if the elevator is accelerating upward. So uh, we're going to first start with our system boundary. And so here is our system boundary right there. And then it, it's accelerating upward. I'm going to make up positive. And the two forces acting on this uh, lady are the normal force upward and uh, the weight of her, of this lady, which is mg. And then the next step is to apply Newton's second law. So we're going to take the force in the positive direction, uh, normal minus force in negative direction, mg, and set that equal to our system mass times acceleration. Uh, when we do that, n is going to be equal to mg plus ma. If I add mg on both sides, I can factor out the m, and I get n equals m times uh, parentheses g plus a. So now next, let's look at the normal force if we're accelerating downward. So if we're accelerating downward, um, I'm going to make down positive and, the, uh, set and apply Newton's second law. So the force going down is mg minus n equals ma. So uh, I'm, I'm looking for n. I'm going to move the n to the right-hand side, move the ma to the left-hand side, and I get n equals mg minus ma. And if I factor out the m, I get n equals m times parentheses g minus, g minus a. 
Now, what's interesting is that here, when it's accelerating upward, her normal force, how she feels, is greater than her weight. It's greater than mg. It's mg plus ma. So when the elevator is accelerating upward, she's going to feel heavier. But however, when she's accelerating downward, uh, her normal force, mg minus ma, she's going to feel lighter. Because normally, and normally when you're just standing not accelerating, you're going to feel a normal force of just mg. And so this is consistent, I think, with our experiences when we go in an elevator. Now let's take a look at a pulley problem uh, with three uh, masses. So here we're looking for the acceleration as well as the tension. And m1 is going to have more mass than m2. So the first thing we're going to do, once again, is to draw our system boundary. And it's going to include all three masses. We're going to indicate our positive direction. And our positive direction, we're going to make that counterclockwise. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is draw a force diagram. We're looking for external forces acting on our system. So we have the weight of M1, M1G, the weight of M2, M2G. I'm not too worried about M3, the weight of M3, uh, because the weight of M3 is equal balanced out with the normal force. And that's not really going to affect the uh, motion of this uh, system here. The next step is to uh, use Newton's second law. And we're going to take all the forces in the positive direction minus all the forces in the negative direction and set that equal to the system mass times the acceleration. And if I divide m1 plus m2 plus m3 on both sides, I get the acceleration is equal to m1g minus m2g divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3. Next, we're going to look for the tension. So to find the tension, we're going to isolate mass 1. We draw the system boundary. We're making down positive, And we're drawing our force diagram. So we have m1g downward, the weight of m1. We have tension force upward along the string. And we're going to apply Newton's second law. So we have m1g minus t1 equals m1a. We're solving for t1. I move t1 to the right. Uh, subtract m1a on both sides. That gets moved to the left. And then just switch the whole thing. Uh, and we get t1 equals m1g minus m1a. Now to find t2, t2, this is between uh, mass 3 and mass 2, uh, we can do the same process. We are going to draw the system boundary around mass 2, we're going to make up positive, it's accelerating up, and we're going to draw a force diagram. So the tension force here, T2, is going to be greater than M2G because it's accelerating upward. And now we're going to apply Newton's second law. So F equals MA, forces in the positive direction, T2, minus forces in the negative direction, minus M2G equals M2A. And we're looking for T2. So uh, we can uh, add M2G on both sides, and we end up with T2 is equal to M2G plus M2A.